Lord Jesus, we come to have a good time in the name of the Lord. Whatever we brought in here this morning, please, ladies and gentlemen, leave this here at the altar. Take out the word of God and let it stand out. Again, whatever we brought in here, let's leave it at the altar. And take out the word of God that is for you. A prayer in our heart. Love has been provided. So please, let's, let's have a good time. I had two sisters came to me this morning and told they, and I'm going to read just one of them. But I got up and I read and I prayed over the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me in beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I feel no evil, but thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We'll be amen. We'll be favored by a song by Minister Washington and the traveling Thomas Brown. So it ain't just about us standing here across the front. It's about all us engaging in the song. All right? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Nobody do me like Jesus. me like the Lord. Nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. When I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. When I rose this morning, have no doubt. When I rose this morning,
Let us pray. O oh, kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with bowed heads and humble hearts. We come thanking you, O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, for another opportunity to enter into your house. We thank you, O oh, gracious God, for you being God and you being God all by yourself. Father God, we look to you, O oh gracious God, because we know that there's none like you. Father God, you're still sitting on the throne. You sit high, but you look low. And Father God, we come this morning thanking you, Father God, for allowing us to see a brand new week that we've never seen before. O oh gracious God, give us strength in this day, O oh gracious God that we may be able to walk worthy of our vocation. Father God, we come bowing this morning, ask for forgiveness of our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father God, we know on last week we fell short in many ways. Father God, the things that you told us to do, many of them we left undone. And some of the things that you told us, Father, not to do, we did. Oh, gracious God, but we bow before you this morning asking for forgiveness. And, Father God, we just thank you, oh, gracious God, for our past, oh, gracious God. And we thank you for the Mount Olive Church family. Father God, we pray a special blessing upon us this morning. If to will, oh, Heavenly Father, just blanket us with your Holy Spirit. Father God, because that we don't need you for one thing, we need you for another. Father God, just guide us, lead us, and protect us. And Father God, with my head bowed, Father God, but my spirit is strong. And I'm praying, O oh Heavenly Father, for the, this nation, O oh gracious God. Father God, so much going on just present here in the United States, not just to speak of what's going on universal. Father God, but we know that you're everywhere time. Noticed by you, O oh gracious God. Father God, be with those, Father God, through wall, cause of the wall, O oh gracious God. Father God, just and minds, Father, that we are God. Father God, just move in a mighty way like only you can do so well. Father God, and right here in our congregation, Father God, we pray, O oh Heavenly Father, for the bereaved families. We pray for those, Father God, who are going through healing from sickness. O oh, gracious God, we are praying for those who are going through other things that's named and unnamed. Oh, gracious God, just have your way in our lives. Father God, for thou art the potter and we are the clay. Mold us and shape us, oh, Heavenly Father, into whom you will have us to be 
and to what you will have us to do. Father God, we are down here leaning and depending on your gracious God. Father God, we don't know the way, but thou knows the way, O Heavenly Father. Just, Father God, let your light shine from heaven on our soul. And all that's not like you, Father God, move it as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again, O gracious God. Father God, help us to be the church that you will have us to be, O gracious God. Time is winding up, O Heavenly Father. It's time for us to be about our Father's business, O gracious God. Father God, it's no time for an outshot show to the world. Father God, no form or no fashion. O Heavenly Father, it's time, Father, to do you, your will, O Heavenly Father. O Father God, we ask you to move like only you can do so well. Father God, and we'll be so mighty careful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory, Father God, that your son Jesus brings to our lives on a daily basis. Father God, this prayer and others, we do pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. God is good, Father. At the Lord, yes. I said the Lord is good. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, the Lord is good. If you trust Him, He'll be good to you. I said the Lord is good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, I know I don't deserve or all of his good, and I know I don't serve him just like I should, but the many things are not the way they should be, but I'm grateful that he keeps being good to me. I say the Lord is good, yeah, if you trust him, he'll be good to you. My father, he's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I went in the valley one day to pray, and my soul got happy, and I stayed all day. Well, my hand got stuck to the gospel plow, and I wouldn't take nothing for my journey right now. Hey, if you don't believe I have been redeemed, come on and follow me down to the Jordan stream. Well, I stepped in the water, and the water was cold. Chill my natural body, but then hum my soul. I said, the Lord is good to me. I said, the Lord is good to me. I said the Lord is good to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know I don't deserve or all of his good. And I know I don't serve him just like I should. But the many things are not the way they should be. But I'm grateful that he keeps being good to me. I said the Lord is good. If you trust him, he'll be good to you. My father, he's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I went in the valley one day to pray. And my soul got happy and I stayed all day. Well, my hand got still to the gospel plow and I wouldn't take nothing for my journey right now hey if you don't believe I have been redeemed come on and follow me down by the Jordan stream well I stepped in the water and the water was cold chill my natural body but then hum my soul I said the Lord is good to me I said the Lord is good to me. I 
said the Lord is good to me. Yeah. Yeah. He keep making a way for me. He turned my midnight into day. He'll pick me up when you down, yeah. Yeah. God. Yeah. I said the Lord is good, yeah. I said the Lord is good, yeah. He's been making a way for me. Yeah. God. Yeah. All the Praise the Lord, Mount Olive. God is worthy to be praised. We thank you for lending your voices in our devotion. So let it not stop here. Let's continue on. Allow the Holy Spirit just come in and do what it's supposed to do, Lord. And we thank you. Good morning, good morning. How y'all doing today? Y'all looking awful lovely today. So at this time, we're going to have the male choir, lead us in the devotion and worship, and worshiping in spirit and truth, everyone. Thank you. Many times 
hold me, hold me, hold me, Jesus. Jesus. Hold me, hold me, hold me, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I need you. Hold me. I need you to hold me. Jesus. You don't hold me. Hold me. I was sure to fall. Somebody needs you to be a doctor. Somebody needs you, Lord, to be a lawyer. Somebody lay in on a bed of affliction. Lord, I need you to be a friend, Lord. Lord, I need you to hold my hand. Oh, Lord. Lord, I need you. Right now, right now, right now, right now, oh Lord, oh Lord, Lord, I need you to hold me. Hey. It's a time of uh, worship where we all can do things in a cheerful giver and a good heart. At this time, could the deacons come to accept the offering and the uh, tithe, please? Good morning, my Olive. This is part of the service we all play a part in. The way we do it here at my Olive, pulpit come first, followed by the choir. First, we'll lead you from the rear to the front. Afterward, we have prayer from come from the pulpit. May everyone stand. Good morning, my Olive family, friends, and visitors. The way is done here. The gospel will be preached, the sick will be prayed for, and most of all, the invitation of Christ will be extended to you. These are your weekly announcements. Thank you to everyone who came out yesterday to the Fall Festival. Thank you to everyone who made this wonder wonderful event possible. Thank you to the committee, the cooks, the photographer, and all the participants. We definitely had a great time. 
Greater Thankful Missionary Baptist Church celebrates their pastoral anniversary today, October 22nd at 2 o'clock p.m. It will be held at Bethlehem Port Missionary Baptist Church in Bleecker, Alabama. The special guest church and pastor is Mott Olive Missionary Baptist Church of Smith Station, Alabama, and Reverend Jeffrey L. McCauley, pastor, will be bringing the word. Our Veterans Day Symposium is scheduled for this Saturday, October 28th, from 10 o'clock a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. The meeting is for all available veterans and spouses within the community. So if you know a veteran or a spouse of a veteran, please invite them and RSVP to Brother McBride. Thank you. Any members wishing to attend the East Alabama Association next week from October 24th to the 26th, please contact Deacon Murphy for registration details. Thank you, Deacon Murphy. Uchi Hill Missionary Baptist Church is celebrating their pa celebrating Pastor Eddie's story and First Lady Deborah's story. First pastor anniversary on Sunday, November 12th at 2 o'clock p.m. The guest church and pastor will be Model Missionary Baptist Church, and Jeffrey L. McCauley will be bringing the word. The Christmas Music Concert. If anyone is interested in singing in the music concert, please see Sister Fanny Lamar. The rehearsal dates are October 28th, November 4th and 18th, and also November, December 9th at 11 o'clock a.m., and they are all be held at Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church in Phoenix City, Alabama. The actual Christmas concert will be held here on, the, on December 10th at 5 o'clock p.m. The Veterans Day program will be held November 5th, 2023 at 11 o'clock a.m. The guest speaker will be Minister Anita M. Peabody. Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church presents the pop-up shop slash community yard sale. It will be Saturday, November 4th, beginning at 7 o'clock a.m. and will end at 12 o'clock noon. Vendors prices for all is $20 per table. All proceeds from the sales will go to you. The deadline for reserving your space is Sunday, October 28th. Please contact Sister Jan Upshaw or Sister Keisha Jacobs or Sister Brenda Williams for more information and payment. Thank you all in advance. I hope to see you there. If you're interested in being a part of the Praise Dance Ministry, please see Sister well, Minister Rosie Washington. Thank you. To Pastor and First Lady McCauley and all of my Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church family, my heart is so full with love and gratefulness. I'm thankful to God that I have a church family that genuinely loves and cares for me so much. Thank you. Thank you each and everyone for all the positive thoughts, prayers, calls, texts, and visits. I'm home now recovering and resting. I love you all so much. And my continued prayers is that God blesses each of you, Sister Lakita Luke. Blessings on your birthdays and anniversaries of the month of, the month of October. Brother Dennis James is celebrating a birthday on October 30th. Congratulations to Brother Mike and Lauren Richmond. They celebrated their ninth anniversary yesterday, October 21st. Please continue to keep our sick, shut-in, and bereaved families lifted in prayer. Please keep Brother Adams and his wife lifted in prayer. Miss Lisa's mom transitioned on yesterday. Thank you, and this concludes our morning announcements, and now we'll turn it over to Ms. Jan Upshaw.
once again, we want to thank everyone that came out to the Fall Festival, and we really want to thank all the ones that came out real early to help get everything started. We thank you all so much. But we did, um, we forgot about one of the gifts that we were supposed to give out. We were so busy with trying to get everything done. It was our first time trying to do this, and we wanted to make sure everything was done right, but we still forgot something. So with that being said, we uh, did a judgment on the best decorated uh, vehicle for the trunk or treat, and the winner is Dennis James. That ends our announcements. One more announcement. We have cake left from yesterday, cake and some candy. So immediately after church, please come to the fellowship hall if you would like a slice of red velvet. Red velvet and also a homemade pound cake. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Y'all make sure y'all go get some red velvet and some pound cake. Amen. To God be the glory. We really did have a nice time, amen. If you weren't there, you, you missed the treatment. You missed the treatment, amen. And I want to reiterate, I want to thank everyone for showing up, and you did a great job, amen. A great job, thank you. Amen, amen. I think at first, Sister Jacob, she got kind of worried, uh, Dick, because when too many folks, you know, coming like she thought, they, I said, just give them time, you know, we, yeah, just give them time, you know, we're going to be late, I mean, we, we coming, we coming. Amen. To God be the glory. <laughs> so we just thank God for that. Amen. Let's give it up for our young people in the house. Our young people in the house. Amen. All right, I want to present uh, Miss uh, the Caitlin. I think I pronounced that right. Come on, stand up, sweetheart. All right, this, this is your certificate of, of baptism. So this certifies that when Caitlin Mahogany, upon the profession of faith, has been baptized and is hereby awarded with certificate by non Missionary Baptist Church, uh, Smith Station, Alabama, on this 27th day of October, year 2023. Yours truly, Pastor. Amen. This is yours, okay? Yeah, you can put that back in there. <laughs> put it back in there for a moment. And this is the way to give you if the Bible is in there, the certificate, not the certificate, hold the frame is in there. And so I, I think it's a little too big, but just, just make that work in. And uh, help out mom, okay? All right. God bless you, sweetheart. We love you. All right. Okay. Hey, I want to thank Reverend Whitney for going in the water with me this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank God for these musicians. Yeah. Um, and this mayor, of course, amen. They are dressed to impress. Amen. And today, Know, we'll be going to Bethlehem Port. Uh, that program is at 2 o'clock. So if we leave here at 1.30, y'all get there you know, enough time. Amen? I don't know if we take in the van or the bus. I think everybody just drive down there. Amen? Anybody need a ride? Okay, everybody just, just they drive on down. Amen. To God be the glory. And uh, Pastor Bird, he's looking forward to us coming and having a grand time. There's going to be plenty of food there. Amen. Amen. And the other week, and speaking of him, the other week, I, I asked him that would he be my wife and myself pastor. So he's he's my pastor. Amen. Willie Burton. He is our pastor. Amen. I need someone. You know, I need a covering, someone who's down on this end, since I'm down here on this end. Amen. And I'm a member of this church as well as the pastor of this church, dual roles. Amen. And so I need someone who, you know, they've been in the trenches. Amen. And, and been traveling this way for a long time. And so he is my pastor. He agreed to do that. And uh, when I asked him to do that, he started to cry. Amen. Said, did something. Just touched his heart. Amen. 
And then, you know, after he started crying, you know what happened next, don't you? I started crying. So, amen. So that's where that went. And so we just thank him for that. And so we're looking forward to having a grand time. Amen. All right. I think uh, all of them, I'm going to say this right quick. I think most of the Alabama fans are here. Because I heard now through the, the grapevine that if Alabama had a loss, they wasn't coming to church. Now, now that ain't no reason to stay away from church, is it? All right. <laughs> Any, it, as the younger folks say, anyway, uh, we just thankful to be here today. Are you glad to be in the house of prayer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us continue to pray for all of our sick and our shut in, and for the bereaved family, Sister Lisa. Adams, her mom, transitioned on the other day, and so we want to be in prayer with them. And also, uh, you can turn them off, and I mean, I wasn't aware that he, that he had been down for a week or two. Amen. But he's here this morning. Yeah. I noticed when I seen him walking in with the cane, I said, what's going on with D? And uh, he said, man, I've been down. So I'm dealing with your leg and stuff, what happened. Amen, amen. But you're here this morning. We just thank God, amen. All right. And uh, my daughters as well, they've been under the weather. Well, one of them, Sister Kent Tay, she's been under the weather. She's here today. Amen. All right. <laughs> and, uh, of course, the wife, you know, you know, I told you about her, but she, she's alive and well. And so she's doing pretty good. And we just thank God for that. Thank you, ushers, for holding down the wall. Amen. Looking good in Jesus' name. What you got, D? Okay. Can't miss this one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Amen. To God be the glory. Reverend Murphy, you want to come up, sir? The father of our church. Come on, sir. Yeah. And he's sharp, too. Amen. I like that bow tie. Yes, sir. God bless you. Bless you. preached this morning. All right. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. May of course, are y'all ready to give us another selection? Come on. Let's praise God.
to the Syrian. He went on down to the ticket office and got him a ticket. And he was on his way to a place called Tosh. And he went on down on the bottom deck. Got over in the corner and went fast asleep. But what he didn't know when he lay down, God was looking right at him. God was looking right at him. But God didn't bother him. All God did was, well, he called a wind. And he told the wind, I want you to blow. And he told the thunder, I want you to roll. And he told the lightning, I want you to flash. And he told the tide, send the marine light. Cause I got a child that's trying to run and think he can hide. And about that time, the captain came around, told the true member, turn up your anchor. We gotta get ready and set for sale. And then they tell me the thunder start to roll and the lightning start to flash. Tie stood up a real high and the wind began to blow. Captain got come through, told all the true members. We ain't never, ain't never had trouble before. Then he told all the truth. Come on the top deck. Can't hide. Can't run. You can't hide. Can't run. You can't hide. You don't know when or how he coming. You just can't get by. Can't run and can't hide. Amen. One thing about it, nothing gets out of the eye shot of God. God sees everything, knows everything. He's everywhere at the same time. He got all power. So who are we to think that we can run from God? Come on, somebody. Amen, amen. No matter what's being done in the dark, <laughs> always comes to the light. God be the glory. Heavenly Father, we come before you now thanking you for uh, your many, many blessings that you have restored upon us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done and what you will do. We praise your holy and your righteous name as we stand now before your people. God, I stand in your righteousness and in your faithfulness. I can't do nothing without you. But with you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thank you, Father. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need. Let me call on a little line. The old Lord, I need thee every hour. I need thee, oh, let me down. My
Therefore, my beloved brother, and be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. You may be seated oh, in the presence of the Lord. We're going to talk about, look at this. Come on, me and your team. Where you at? There it is. Hold on to everything God gives you. You got to hold on to it. Because, beloved, believe it or not, the enemy will try to steal from you. He wants to take your joy. Yeah. The devil wants you to walk around mad and mean. Uh -huh, like you, like you really scaring somebody. He wants to steal your character, your personality, everything that makes you go and glow for the Lord. The enemy wants to take it from you. He wants to see you walking around miserable, like you are a castaway or a throwaway. But you know what? I'm a child of God. I've been born again. This joy, somebody said this joy, that I, the world did not give it to me. He didn't give it to you either. But the enemy will have you to believe that all that you have, all that you have accomplished in life, 
He wants all of the credit for it. God Almighty. I know I'm nothing without the Lord. And all that I have, it belongs to him. The Lord giveth. The Lord taketh away. Uh -huh. But since this joy that I have, I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to illustrate. I'm going to confess. I'm going to profess. That Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and he's able to save from the uttermost to the guttermost. Jesus is able to save that which is lost. In other words, I'm going to hold up my faith banner. Anybody besides me got a faith banner? My faith in the Lord. Somebody said this morning, said, but you got to trust him. Uh-huh. Yeah, you, you, you got to trust God. In other words, take God at his word. See, see, folk will walk away from you. But heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word, said the Lord, will always be around. You got to have the word of God. This takes focuses on Paul giving advice to the Corinthians that encourages them to hold on to their faith. Hold on to their commitment. There's a word nobody, oh man, we get amnesia when it comes to commitment. And their newly released power of God. What was it that woke you up this morning? The power of God. You, you, you dare give that clock credit. No, don't you dare give that clock credit, that alarm clock. to wait. No, no, no. It had nothing to do with it. Yes, you heard it. But you had the activities of your faculties and all your members because the grace of God and the love of God kept you and he snapped you in two. This moment. Paul, now he uses several words to describe how the Corinthians should hold on. He says they got to be what? You see it, steadfast, unmovable, abounding, work and labor. And together these words, Paul would hope that they would explain his formula for keeping a firm grip on their faith in the power of God. So if you break it down and you give a definition of each word, let's look at steadfast. Deriving from the word meaning to sit, to be firm, movable. So many of us have been shaken out of our destiny, have been shaken out of our promises that God had promised us, have been moved out of your position in God all because the enemy tricked you. You got out of your seat of promise. You did not remain firm in what you believe and know who God is. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We got that right. So if he's the same, God has not changed. Well, what changed? Oh, what was it that caused us to change? Oh, we think God reneged on his word? Hmm. We stopped believing God? Hmm? God watches over his word to what? To perform it or to do it. You got to stay firm in the Lord. We got to stop being tossed to and fro with every wind and doctrine. You, you, you know how it is. You got ministries everywhere popping up everywhere. Everybody get on the storefront. And we hear about it. Ooh, I think I run over there. I think they got it going on over there. Well, 
they can have it going on over there if they preach in Jesus. But that's what it's all about. See, every time something new pops up, he's just like a child, though. Every time, you know, a child, he plays with the toy for a while and he's finished with it. No, I want something new. I want something new. I'm tired of that toy. I don't want that anymore. I want this one. I want that one. That's what we are. But you got to be firm. You got to be steadfast. You just got to get somewhere and sit down. Call a body. In this context, it means to take a strong stance so as not to be knocked off of your feet. It don't take much for some folk to be knocked off of their feet. I mean to be bamboozled. I mean to be bewitched. <laughs> to be entertained. I think I'll go over here. I think I'll go over there. And then once you stay there a while, you say, wait a minute, I think I'll go back over here. I think I'll go back over there. Being tossed to and fro with every wind and doctrine well, the truth is just the truth. And you know what? You don't have to apologize for the truth. Hmm? Now, I can tell you this. Telling the truth will separate you. It will either draw or drive you away. And sometimes you find yourself standing all alone. But, I'd rather be one with God. I'd rather be popular with God than popular with folk. Oh, we're living in, in, in unpopular times now. No, folks don't really want, want church no more. They don't want God anymore. No, they're finding other ways to where they think they can get into heaven. But Jesus is the way. Huh? It'll always be that way. I don't care what they say, do, where they go, what they think, what they're trying to obtain. Jesus is the way, truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except me. Jesus, see? That's what church is all about. And, you know, we try to fix it up. We try to box it up, put it in different packages. You know, we try to make it appealing to people to where they say, well, where are our young folk? I tell you where our young folk, most of them, they're on the phone. They're on the phone, man. They doing this. Technology. But you pray for our children. Don't get me wrong. With technology, there are some good things that can happen with technology, yes. But most of the time, what you see on Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter, you see all that which is wrong, all that which is corrupt and ungodly and unethical. See? So what we got to do is we still, we still have to stay on that foundation. We got to stay on Jesus Christ. See, what you want to say, that's where it always was with us. When mom and daddy then brought us, it, was, it, it wasn't all that other stuff. You know, no, no. You was going to come and sit down, and you was going to come and hear the word of God. Huh? And uh, nothing else. And if you got wrong, I got something for you. No more, no less. Yeah, that's where it was. You was going to hear the word of God. You was going to be taught the word of God. See? But somehow, somewhere, we're leaving the foundation. We're leaving the foundation. And therefore, God has to allow certain things to come in and to whip us, so to speak. God has to do something. God, God wants us to know that he's still in charge, whether you believe it or not. He's still in charge. Steadfast. A believer has to know that it's by the power of God 
to where we must position ourselves in life and to stand against the attempts of Satan. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to dissuade us from the Christian service. Oh, but here's another one. Unmovable. What is that? Not to be moved from its place. To be unmoved. To be firmly and persistent. Nothing can move us out of the job we have been assigned by the Lord. God has given us all an assignment. When you were born again, you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We all got one gift. At least one. You can have a whole lot of talents, but you got at least one gift. And you ought to use that gift to build up the church, to build up the believers. Yeah, I know people who are talented, man. They go all over the world. They can do this, that, and the other. Man, they can go high in life only to lose what they obtain. They lost it. All of the money. You know people like that. They get all of the money. They can get this, that, and the other with their talents only to lose it. Part of the reason is because they didn't include God in it. You got to put God in there. If you put God first place, somehow, some way, God allowed it to work out. And we know that all things works together for the good of them that love God. See, you got to put some God in it. Just can't rely on your talent because sometimes talents, when you get old and time have been sown, that talent that you had, some way, form, or another has its time to leave you. I can't do what I used to do. You know, you say, I can't do what I used to do. Yeah. My mind. My mind says, yes, you can do it. Oh, but that old body. No. Man, I can't get out here and run a quarter mile. Four, five, whatever. Can't do that. No, that, my mind tells me that I can. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, just plain. It was only like yesterday. You remember how it was. How you get out there and run, you swift. Man, you can run that quarter mile like no other. Yeah. Play the fool if you want to. Then I got to think, I, wait a minute, I'm 60 years, man, I can't, I can't do that. I won't even attempt it. But that's why young folk, you, 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 you better give God glory. Now you better pray, serve him while you're in your youth. There's nothing wrong with serving God while you're young. Oh, yes, you're going to have some friends to fall away from you, though, when you do that. Well, think about it this way. They really weren't your friend in the first place. If you made a choice to follow God, and now they want to leave you, we'll holler at you. See, that's what you do. We'll holler. And, you, and God, you know what? God will put some more friends in your place. Someone who is really concerned about you and your welfare. Yeah. Unmovable. And then look what he said. Always abounding. Always abounding. What is that? To exceed a fixed number of measure. To be left over and above a certain number or measure, to have an abundance, to excel. The message is that we should strive to excel in the Lord's work. Whatever we do for God should be our best. Songwriter said it this way, 99 and a half just won't do. I'm trying to make 100 because the 99 and a half won't do. I got to make 100. Not satisfied with just getting by, but strive to abound. 
okay, abounding in what? The work of the Lord. Work means business or employment than which anyone is occupied. Anything accomplished by hand, art, industry, or mind, act, or deed. Our work for the Lord is our job for God. And if we are servants of the Lord, surely we have a job to Scripture. Oh, God. That requires what? Here it is. A whole lot of folk ain't got it. Requires time and energy. <laughs> Which gives us the word labor. Not so much as to work hard, but the weariness which accompanies it. This word in its primitive form means a beating. Anytime you find yourself working for God, there has to be a sacrifice involved. There has to be commitment involved, dedication involved. I know, I know. We, we, we and, and, and I used to do it, I could make time for anything else and everybody else. But when it came to doing the work of God, I tried to renege on God. Man, I ain't got time. To, I would, but we all have that. I would, but. Wow. You ever had a I would and a but? <laughs> oh, you know what? I would. But you know what? And you, you know, and when it comes to that like that, you always think of something else that you, you had to do. I would, but I just remember. I got to do. Y'all been there? I would, but I just remember. You ain't thought about it all week long. But here it is, out of the blue. I would, but I just remember. <laughs> oh, labor means sometimes trouble comes with laboring for the Lord. Being talked about when you're laboring for the Lord. Yeah, all that comes with the territory. My brothers and sisters, when we labor, we got to labor in love. Both our labor and love should be an expression of our love for God. Perform cheerfully and with delight when I'm laboring for the Lord. Because when I find myself doing that, I can understand now that all my labor won't be in vain. Why? Because first of all, I'm doing it for the Lord. I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing it because God called me to do it. If he called me to do it and put me to it, I got to try to do the best that I can. Not that I always do the best that I can. But with the help of the Lord, I have to go back to him. Lord, help me to do better next time. See, you got to always find yourself going back to God. Have I got a witness here? And so when you're laboring, for the Lord. God somehow in some way, he fixed it for you. When you get ready to make decisions for your business and what have you, and then you're in school, you want to do good in school, and then you got to remember, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for the Lord because I know God said, you know, only what I do for Christ is going to last. You, you got to do unto your school like you're doing it unto the Lord. Even on your job, I got to be on my job, doing to my job like I'm doing it to the Lord. I got to do the best that I can. See? I got to respect those who are in position. Not that I always will understand or like their decision, but that's their position. And I got to respect their position. And if I don't like it, then I can leave. Understand? So, do your job as you're doing it unto the Lord. That's what you got to do, young folks. When you go off to school, your college, and what have you, just think about it. You wouldn't have that mental uh, capability if it weren't for the Lord. You wouldn't be as smart as you are if it wasn't for the Lord. Amen. You got to give God praise. You got to thank him for it. See? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes, when we do that, knowing that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. You see that? In the Lord. 
see. Anytime you find yourself in the Lord, and the Lord is in you, God makes that chemistry come together to work even more so for your betterment. For your betterment. A lot of times we try to rely on us. You know, look what us done. Look what I did. Me, myself, and I. You can't do that. Lord, if it had not been for you, that's what you got to find yourself doing. Yeah. That's what, and I'm sure, Brother Moffat, a lot of days you, you done said that. Now, how old are you, sir? 80, how old are you? 80, how old are you? 89? 90? You 90? Okay, he, he's 90 years old. 90 years old. But if it had not been for the Lord, that's right. All right, he said he preached. He, he preached already this morning. That's right. 90 years old and still carrying the torch. See? See? That's what I'm talking about. That, that's, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. That's, that's where I want to be. When the Lord, he allowed time to come along, whereas I got to step away. Uh, Lord, just let, let me holler him and Andy if I can. Just let, let me continue to preach. I, I, you know what? I, I, I don't want to get to an age to where you know, I can barely make it up into the pulpit. No, I don't want to be like that. You know, I, I, I'm like this. I, I, you know, I, I, can, I can step away and let somebody else come along because it's not about me anyway. See what I'm saying? That's me now. Yeah, because I want to see the church go and grow and be vibrant. See, just let me sit down and well, with the pastor here, just say, well, can you preach him on? I, I can say a little bit. You know, just let me let me be like that. Amen. Amen. And I'll be just a content. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's where it ought to be. Yeah, see, it ought to be where you want to hold the church hostage. Church don't deserve that. No, no. When it's time to sit down and get down, sit down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all laughing at me. <laughs> but that's 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 the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. I still can preach Jesus. I still can be a witness for the Lord. I, I don't have to stand here. You know, I can be down there. See? That's where it's going to be. But I thank God. He gave me sense enough to know that. Amen, somebody. You got to hold on to whatever God gives you. And you best believe the enemy is going to try to steal. He's going to try to kill. He's going to try to destroy what God has given you. He's given you life. He's given you health. He's given us strength. And you best believe, any way possible, if he got anything to do with it, he's going to try to take that from you. But the devil is alive. with his stripes or with his whoopings, I'm healed. You got to know that. And you got to believe that. Even though things don't look quite as well as it should be, you st the word still stands. With his stripes, I'm healed. We ain't done preaching or teaching or demonstrating to the glory of God until this last breath have been taken Until then, we got a job to do. That's what we got to do. And so once we do that, we can understand what it is to a greater degree than what God wants us to do and to be. You got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. I've heard that all my life. You got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. I didn't understand it then as I was younger. But as I got older and began to learn more and be taught more, I understand it now. You got to hold on to the presence of God. Keep your faith in the Lord. Only what we do for Christ will suffer and will last. Hold on to everything God gives you. 
That's what you got to do, church. With all that's within you, you got to do that. Don't let nobody tell you what you can't do. But with Christ, I can do all things. <laughs> yes. Lord, help me to be a better preacher, a better teacher, a better servant, a better granddad. Come on, somebody. A better uncle. Help me to be better. A better grandmother. A better teacher. Lord, help me. That's what you got to do. And so, hold on to everything God gives you. Amen? Amen. All right. Have the musician play. Do the church is open. I feel good.
Good God Almighty. To God be the glory. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Amen. I think one of those verses was what you say, out in the sunshine, out in the rain. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Amen. Have you been helped today? Amen. To God be the glory. Hold on to everything God gives you. Amen. Let us continue to pray for all of our sick and our shut in, okay? Let's do that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, media team. Thank you so much. Amen. Now, won't be no Bible study next week. You know that the annual session will be next week. And so we're going to be involved in that. Uh, no Bible study next week, okay? Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. All right. Well, that's all I have. We give God the praise. Give him the glory. Good to see you, Brother Frank. Good to see you, sir. Amen. Amen. All right. All hearts, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you're here today. Definitely does that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. It's a constant fight with that devil. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. Let us stand. Let us not forget about today, 2 o'clock at Bethlehem Port. Amen. I want to see some of your face in the place. I know I ain't going to see everybody. But I want to see some of your faces in the place. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So, Stringer, you wearing that hat. You wearing that hat. She wearing that hat. Amen. All right. All right. All claim our attention. Let us pray. Father, we come now. And we thank you for your presence and power. We thank you for our candidate been baptized today, God, we pray, Lord, that you continue to go with her and stand by her, Lord. God, keep her, close her in the right mind, oh God, and we just thank you right now. The Lord, thank you for her family, oh God, continue to bless and keep them, Lord. We give you the praise, honor, and the glory. All of our sick and shut in, the bereaved families of this church, oh God, and all of our neighboring churches, Lord, I pray for every preacher and pastor and layman, God, that you continue, oh God, to go with us and stand by us. Now, Father, now may the grace of God and sweet communion, Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide, be with you all henceforth and forever. Let us all say amen, amen, and amen. All right. Go in peace. We love you.